We've been mixing UIKit and SpriteKit ever since our very first SpriteKit project, way back in project 11. It's always been here inside our game view controller, a regular UI view controller with an SK view, which is a custom UI view subclass for SpriteKit right there inside. This UI kit setup has been there all along, but mostly we've been ignoring it. No more though. We're going to add some controls to our SK view so players can fire bananas. The way the game works, each player gets to enter an angle and a velocity for their throw. We'll be recreating this with a UI slider for both of those numbers, along with a UI label so players can see exactly what numbers they chose. We'll also add a launch button that makes the magic happen. Now think about this for a moment. Our game view controller needs to house and manage the user interface. And the game scene needs to manage everything inside the game. But they also need to talk to each other. The view controller needs to tell the game scene to fire a banana when the launch button's pressed. And the game scene needs to tell the view controller when the player's turn's finished so another banana can be launched. This two-way communication could be done using Notification Center, but it's not very pleasant. We know the sender and the receiver, and we know exactly what kind of data they will send and receive. So the easiest solution here is to give the view controller a property that holds the game scene, and give the game scene a property that holds the view controller. To avoid strong reference cycles, we'll make one of them weak. So first, we'll go to game scene Swift and add this property to our game scene class. Weak var view controller is a game view controller optional. Then over in the game view controller, we'll add this property to the class. Var current game is an optional game scene, like that. Now the way SpriteKit works is all this code here in the game view controller creates and shows our game scene. So the game view controller already owns a game scene, but it's a pain to get to. You can see it's going to have to be typecast as an SK view for the view inside it, and inside that view is the scene being shown. However, by adding a property for that up here in line 14, we now have direct access to the game scene whenever we need it. To connect that up, we'll add some lines of code just after this call to present scene. We'll say current game equals scene as question mark game scene, and then current game dot view controller equals self. So attempt to type class like scene as a game scene, which would always work, but now I'm being safe. I assign that optionally to current game, and then set its view control property to be ourself to establish communication between the two things. And now to design the UI. Like I said, this needs two sliders with some labels next to it, plus a launch button, and one more label that will show whose turn it is. Let's go ahead and open up main.storyboard. And you can see it's shaped like an iPhone, which is not much help when you're designing an iPad landscape app. So down here where it says view as iPhone XR, please select that now. Then choose an iPad from this list. And finally, Change orientation from portrait to landscape. Boom, that's our iPad size screen there. Let's start with our sliders. I'll go to the object library, look for a slider, and drag out one of these, like that, and then another one. So we have two sliders. Using the size inspector, we can give these things precise positions and sizes. So this first one on the left, I'll say is at X20 and Y20, the top left corner. For width, I'll say 300. For the second one, I'll say it has the X position 480 and the Y20 again, and again, width 300. We need some labels to show the values of those sliders. So back in the object library, I will look for a label Drag one out, then drag another one out. They have black text color by default, which makes them hard to see. I'll just select them both and give them a white color instead so you can see what's going on. Boom, there we go. This first label, I'll give this the X position, three, two, five, a Y, of 24, so slightly lower than the slider, but as you can see, it aligns it vertically very nicely with the slider, and a width of 120. 
For the second label, this is going to have an X value of 785. The Y is 24 again. And the width is 120 again. Boom. Now you want a launch button. So I'll look for a button in the object library and drag one of those out. This will be at uh, X910, Y13. We'll have width 100 and height 44. You'll see it's right there in the top right corner of the screen. And finally, we want a label saying whose turn it is. So I'll go out to the object library, add another label, drag one of these out. Give it a nice white text color again so we can see what's going on. And for the size, we can say X is 370, Y is 64, width 285, and height 35, like that. That's the basic layout. We'll make a few small tweaks to make it exactly right. For example, this left-hand left slider here, this thing, we're going to change the way its values work. It has a, a minimum of 0, maximum of 1 with a value of 0 0.5. I'll change that so it's got a maximum value of 90 and a minimum value of 0 and a regular value of 45. So again, halfway up. Now, so this right-hand slider over here, we'll change that so it's got a maximum value of 250 and a current value of 125. Again, halfway up. This label in the middle, this thing needs to have a title of... I'll do three left angle brackets and say player one, like that. Plus, center it on the screen. And for this button, which you can barely see anymore because it's on a top right corner here in like a darkish blue color, I'll make that thing nice and chunky. Uh, so I'll say it's not system 15, but system bold, size 22, like that. Nice and chunky. Plus, we'll change that text color. Uh, so it's not this default iOS blue, but a nice and bright red color instead. That's our layer all done, but we also need lots of outlets. So in the assistant editor, let's set them up now. Uh, this slider on the left, that's going to be our angle slider. So down here from space, I'll drag you out and say you are angle slider. The label to its right will show the value of that slider. So I'll drag it out and say angle label. The one on the right, this is our velocity, how hard to throw the banana. So I'll drag that out to here and call you velocity slider. And for its label, drag that out and say velocity label. For the launch button, drag that out. That is called just launch button. And for this player label in the middle, drag that out and call that thing player number. You'll also need to create some actions, one from the left slider, one from the right slider, and one for the button. So I'll find some space in our view controller down here. Then control drag from the slider down to here. Uh, we'll call this thing angle changed. Uh, for the one on the right, we'll call down here Velocity Changed. Like that. And finally, for the button, I'll control drag from there down to the code to call this thing Launch. That's all our layout done. So we're finished with IB. We can open up Game View Controller of Swift and hide this bar on the right back to the standard editor. We need to fill in the methods angle changed, velocity changed, and launch. Write one new method, and then make two small changes to view to load. These action methods down here, angle changed and velocity changed, they're both simple. They update the correct label with the slider's current value. A UI slider always stores its values as a float, but we only care about the integer value of that float. So we'll convert the values to ints, and then use string interpolation to update the labels. So for angle changed, we can say angle label dot text is equal to angle colon, then string interpolation, the int form of angle slider dot value, like that. And then for velocity changed, velocity label dot text is equal to velocity 
and then string interpolation, the int form of velocity slider dot value, like that. So each time, take the value from the slider, convert to an int, i.e. lose the fractional values, and put that into the string. The only hard thing here is for angles to be a little bit fancy. We really want a degrees symbol. To do that, up here in our string, you want to press Shift, Option, and 8. And that is a degrees symbol. With those methods written, we need to call both of them inside view did load in order to have them load up with their default values. So up in view did load, here uh, we can say angle changed and pass in self and velocity changed and pass in self. And the value being passed in, that sender value isn't being used, but that's okay, we haven't got to worry about it. Now you could have easily typed those default values into Interface Builder, and sometimes it's helpful to do so in order to measure your layout correctly. But setting it up in code means you only have one place that can set those values, so it's easier to change later on if needed. When a player taps a launch button, we need to hide the UI so they can't try to fire again until we're ready. Then tell the game scene to launch a banana using the current angle and velocity. Our game will then proceed with physics calculations until the banana is destroyed or lost, i.e. off screen, at which point the game will tell the game controller to change players and continue. The code for the launch method, down here when the button's tapped, that's trivial, largely because the work of actually launching a banana is hidden behind a call to a launch method that we'll add to the game scene shortly. So there we'll say, angle slider dot is hidden is true. Then angle label dot is hidden is true. And velocity slider dot is hidden is true. And velocity label dot is hidden is true. Same for the launch button. Is hidden is true. Hide nearly all the active UI. And then we'll call another method that doesn't exist yet. We'll say current game dot launch at the angle. We'll pass in the int version of our angle slider dot value and the velocity of the int form of our velocity slider dot value. Pass them both in. And again, that doesn't exist yet, so Xcode will be unhappy. To make Xcode happy again, we're going to add an empty launch method to our game scene. Up here in game scene .swift, I'll scroll down and say func launch angle int velocity int open and close braces. No code inside there, we'll write that shortly. Back in game view controller, once the banana is finished and it's off screen or been destroyed, we want to tell the game to activate a different player. So we can say below here, func activate player number int. Then if player is equal to one, player number dot text is left, 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 player one. Else, player number dot text is player two. Right, right, right. And then we'll reshow our UI. I'll just copy and paste all these is hidden lines up here into activate player. And I'll say false rather than true. So it's all showing again. Hopefully that will make our code compile cleanly. Let's find out. It's still angry here. I made a mistake somewhere. Let's find out. Oops, yeah, should be question mark. My mistake. Boom. That should work more nicely, hopefully. And that should be number, not player. Sorry. There we go. Should hopefully clear things up. Fantastic. Let's try and run the game now, see how it looks. Should look more or less the same, but hopefully our sliders and labels now work correctly. So you see angle 45, velocity 125. And I drag this thing up and down. Boom. Look at that. Nice. And up here in velocity. Fantastic. And when I press button, it all disappears exactly as it ought to. I notice that button still has the title button, which is a mistake. I should really say launch, which is much more dramatic, I think. You, you are launch. Perfect. 